Tonight, we continue our special investigation of secret societies with a look into Yale University's skull and bones. You're about to learn what only a powerful few ever find out. What goes on at a club that's been shrouded in mystery for 177 years. What really happens behind the padlocked doors of this windowless building? The Tomb of Skull and Bones, Yale's oldest secret society. Its members include some of America's most powerful and privileged elite, all sworn to secrecy. Skull and Bones' only purpose is to get its members into positions of prominence around the world so that they can elevate other members to similar positions. That's it. Alexandra Robbins broke through the wall of silence to write Secrets of the Tomb based on clandestine interviews with dozens of bonesmen. Only 15 Yaleys get picked each year. The society includes at least three U.S. presidents, Supreme Court justices, and too many senators and CEOs to name. In 2004, Bush versus Kerry was the first all-bonesman presidential election. You both were members of Skull and Bones, a secret society at Yale. What does that tell us? Uh, not much, because it's a secret. <laughs> And it's that secrecy that has allowed conspiracy theories to run wild on campus. It's great for the freshmen when they come in and they see it across from old campus and nobody really knows what goes on there. There are people who think that they run the world and it's just a giant conspiracy. If you haven't made a million dollars by the time you hit 35 or something, they give you a million dollars. What I imagine is just like a dark room with a lot of people sitting around it in hooded capes. No bonesman has ever publicly revealed the truth, but it's believed the 15 juniors are selected each spring based on a mix of family connections and their accomplishments. Initiation is actually pretty silly. Members dress in costumes, skeleton costumes, devil costumes, other costumes. Somebody's dressed up as Elihu Yale. The initiates have to do things like uh, drink fake blood out of a skull. And share their deepest, darkest secrets. One of the first activities they participate in is called connubial bliss, or the sexual history. During CB, as it's called, each member must spend an evening standing in front of the other 14 bonesmen and recount his or her entire sexual and romantic history. Legend has it, true bonesmen have gone to even greater lengths to prove their loyalty. According to one such story, Prescott Bush, George W. Bush's grandfather, was part of a group that broke into the Oklahoma burial place of the Apache chief Geronimo and made off with his skull. Judas Schiff, an archivist at Yale's library, says there is some evidence to support the claim. There happened to be a letter there amongst the, the uh, students who were friends uh, from a friend of Prescott Bush who said he and Prescott Bush had indeed stolen the skull of Geronimo. While there is no independent information, Geronimo's grave was disturbed back in 1918. There are photos of skulls inside the Skull and Bones tomb. If you saw some of the earlier photographs of the society, their annual picture was always uh, taken around a table on which was at least one skull that they owned. So what's the payoff for all the secrecy, all the elaborate rituals? Well, here's the thing. Skull and Bones has a reputation of taking care of its own, no matter the cost. They will come to the aid of families if a man dies unexpectedly without money. Um, they will assist the widow and the children. Not only that, Schiff says, but they have their own private retreat, Deer Island, off the coast of New York. And a world of ready investors and political contacts in the highest echelons of American society. Each member gets a catalog of uh, the members of the society. It lists where they live, what they do, a little bit about their resume, how you can contact them. But the biggest mystery of all, what exactly is the point? Setting aside all the legend and myth, what has kept this secret society alive for all these years? Good old-fashioned networking for the super elite. And for a little more on members of Skull and Bones, we're going to talk uh, about tonight's newsmaker, George W. Bush, here for the first time, his take on what life is really like for him after the White House. Over the past months, I've had... Uh a little time to reflect on my years in office and there were some good days and there were some tough days but every day 
I was honored to represent a nation I love. I gave the job my all. I always did what I believed was in the best interests of our country. And I came home to Texas with my values intact.